So we've got automatic transmission. Um, not quite sure what's going on with this cover here. I'm not liking the look of that. It looks a bit, a bit like a sex toy. That's not original. Hi there, welcome back to the channel and to a part exchange video. So here down at the car pitch, I have had a part exchange in against a little Citroen C1 that I've sold uh, literally a few days ago. Now my little C1 came from auction from Aston Barkley, which is the one if you remember, a little black C1 had red door handles, it was a connection model. Now we actually got those door handles painted back black because they looked awful, looked like a car that owned by a clown. But once we did that, got it all polished up and bright, put it straight on sale and it sold literally the same day. Usually the case with these C1s and I goes, they just fly out the door. Now the people that bought it had a part exchange and it was this beautiful Volvo XC70, 2.4 diesel D5 edition with an automatic box. It's got me written all over it. This is a proper old luggy thing that I love to drive. But I do have a bit of a dilemma with it. It's not the sort of thing, although I love the car, that I would necessarily sell on here. It's getting a little bit old on the age. They're big old lumpy things and they're just not the sort of thing that I would usually sell. I'm trying to keep things more simplistic but nonetheless, it is a good car and I think we do need to have a look at it and weigh up whether or not I'm tempted to actually maybe retail this car or should we just vanish it to the auctions and just get rid of it and look to get our money back for it in part exchange, which was £700 with give. So to be honest with you, I'm not too worried about what I've given for it. I think we could probably even make a profit selling it as it is. But it'd be nice to see if we can maybe squeeze something out of it and maybe dare try and retail this car. So we're gonna have a look at it now. Before we do that, just a quick mention to today's sponsor. Now, if you are a Volvo driver, you'll probably like this because I'm offering you free ale, yes, free beer, in today's sponsor from Beer52. So check out this video. How does a free case of beer sound? Well, you're in luck because our friends at Beer52 are offering you a free case of eight exclusive craft beers. Simply go to www.beer52.com slash this car and cover the meager postage of £6.95 to get your free case now. Beer52 is the biggest beer club in the world. Each month they send out their members a case of beer from across the globe and this month it's an absolute belter. Their beer of the world case features eight unique beers from eight different countries, including South Korea, South Africa and Sweden. South Korea's high-rated brewery, the Booth, offer up an exceptional hob-driven pale ale. Bursting with citrus and stone fruit flavours, alongside with a multi-layered bodied, soft mouth feel, it'll keep you coming back for more. Now Sweden's Omnipolo Micro Brewery, known for its innovative beers and its export stout, is no exception. Now if this one expects a pecan chocolate vanilla stout, which offers a smooth, slightly bitter finish, will leave you wanting for more. Now if dark beers are not your thing, do not fear, because they also offer a light case option too. Also in the case, you get the award-winning Ferment magazine, and also a couple of tasty snacks. And even after all that, if you're still unsatisfied, you can simply cancel or pause at any time. So to get your free case of beer and snacks today, simply go to www.beer52.com slash this car to claim your free case now. So that's beer52.com slash this car to get your case today. The link is in the description, guys. Click on that link and you'll get yourself straight over to Beer52. Pay that postage and get your free beer and snacks today. And here it is on the forecourt, the beautiful XC70. 2.4 diesel, about 160 brake horsepower these were in the early stages. They did, use, they did later up them to about 180 brake from memory. Really stern, reliable 2.4 diesel engine, really well liked, and just a really decent, practical, big, lumpy estate car. Everyone loves a Volvo. It's probably one of the true last Volvos, the V70, to be honest with you. Sort of the Volvos that came after it were, with the odd exception, just weren't as good as the stuff we used to see in the 90s and the 2000s, really. But nonetheless, here it is, the cross country edition. Now, you've got the standard V70, and then obviously the XC70. The XC70 is. I've just seen an Orion 69i gear go past, uh, nonetheless. The XC70 is uh, four-wheel drive. This, like I said, this one's a 2.4 diesel with the automatic box. Probably the spec that I would want it in, to be honest. Now, the cross-country edition came with these uh, plastic bumpers on them. Now, it was a bit of a thing at the time, these sort of grey plastic bumpers. Now, obviously, this one's a bit worn at the moment, so they don't look as good as they do, obviously, when they're new. But you can bring them back. You know, a little bit of heat gun on there, a bit of silicon. You'd have them shining up again, looking nice. Whether they look nice, colour-coded, I don't know. I mean, it adds to the look. It sort of was a bit of a thing back in the early 2000s. Those of you remember the Rover, remember the Rover Streetwise? They started dawning those sort of plasticky bumpers, sort of lifted up, sort of tight, sort of crossovers. These were sort of the 
sort of the start of crossovers really everyone started to jack cars up anyway um let's have a proper look at it see so it's got the uh, uplifted suspension being the xc70 four-wheel drive we've got these big beautiful tires on her look at these here they've got a set of continentals all around 215 65 16 r16hs so they are some very very expensive rubber on each corner that's good to see with the xc wheels on there as well pretty straight down the side until we get to the back door which we'll see in a minute um, you can see we've got a bit of a chipping going on there on that uh, rub panel there on the, on the plastic we've also got a little bit of rot i've noticed up here which is a real shame just a little bit of bubbling starting to happen on the top of the door also going there now it actually is on the door itself not on the actual uh, monocoque at the top there so it could just be a case of probably just trying to get that painted at the top how well that will come out i don't know if you painted it because if you're just trying to target that area you might be able to just sort of lose it but you know you could end up painting a door and if you had to do that you've got to weigh up whether it's worth doing because that is a big job to paint that door um so we'll see what we go we'll see what the paint man says if we go down that route we might not even get that far of it. so let's just not worry about that just yet um like i said this back tire here again good as the front they've got decent continentals all around so the tires are all superb pads don't look too bad i can just quick see quick through there for the wheels they don't look too bad the plastics won't refurb in there, all sort of gone grey. So obviously we need to do a bit of a refurb job on that. Back tailgates, not too bad. Got a little bit of something going on there with a the, bit of flaking on the body there of the underneath the cross country sticker, sort of going down to the primer, but it's not rotted through. To be honest, there's not really a great deal you could do about that. To be honest, about sort of painting it and re putting a new sort of uh, sticker on it, which we're not going to do. Uh, it just is what it is. It is. Remember, it is a 20 year old car. Roof's nice and straight. The back's nice and straight. Got a UK sticker on there, so she's been abroad. Plastics on the back here again. We've got a little bit going on there, but again, you're not going to really deal with that. It's 20 year old. You're going to have to. There's only so much you can do with it. But again, just wants a bit of a tidying up on the plastics. Another Conti on the near side rear. Again, in good order. Nice and clean down this side. It isn't too bad this side, with the exception of a little bit of a mark there on that rear quarter at the bottom where it meets the bumper. It's not too bad for what it age of the car and what it is. Quite pleased with the condition of it. Mileage wise, I think it's done about 119,000. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Front's nice and clean as well. Little wipers on there. They're all a bit rusty. They could do with changing. Where we'd source them from, probably be an eBay job to get a set of them. I don't think we've got any of them in stock on the old uh, wiper blade board. But overall, for a 20 year old Volvo that's probably done 100 odd thousand miles, it ain't in bad shape really. I'm quite pleased with it. Just a shame about that top of that door. But anyway, let's not worry about that for now. Inside, oh, it's just Swedish luxury. Look at it, absolutely beautiful. You can just tell as soon as I'm gonna sit on that seat, oh, I'm gonna fall asleep, it's gonna be awesome. It's just a beautiful place to be in a Volvo. They did know how to build a car, these Swedes. Nice leather lined, and this is only an SE model as well. But this one, inside, other than what in a valet, it ain't that bad. Quick valet and a bit wiped down of these seats, bit of cream on them, oh, it'd look lovely. Like I said, big old spacious thing. We'll open the boot in a minute because we've got a few goodies in there we need to have a look through. But we'll have a quick look inside her. Ah, got the key. Key there, I want sorting out. I want a new casing on it. It's all falling to pieces, bit of tape on it. But can confirm the central locking is all working on it. So that's good news. Inside here, well, it's beautiful. What can I say? Plastics are pretty decent for the age. We're no real sort of wearing on any of the buttons or anything for the age of it. It's actually really nice in here. Genuinely is nice. Quick look in the glove box. Uh, no manual pack in there which is a shame but we've got a lovely bit of bit, bit of wood there i don't think it's real um a bit of veneer in here nice again on the lever no rips or tears some paperwork there we'll have a look at in a minute so we get it fired up on the dash yeah we go 119,000 miles on the clock we've got a drop of diesel as well which is always nice i have noticed this was mentioned by the uh the guy part exit we've got a notice there for anti-skid service required now it's basically that's a traction control issue now he said he's had it looked at and it's to do with the sort of ring gear which is behind here like a squid you could call it which does make sense that would have a, an effect on that and he has got the part new in the boot we could look at that further investigation if that is the case we've got the part it's not be too difficult to sort out um, it's not really a major issue we can fix that nonetheless it's not really one i'm getting too worried about if we decide to go on with it let's fire her up oh look at that never in doubt straight up that 2.4 diesel engine sounding lovely. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So we've got automatic transmission. Um, not quite sure what's going on with this cover here. I'm not liking the look of that. It looks a bit a bit like a sex toy. That's not original. Um, 
but nonetheless it goes into gear we just sit, move off there and drive and brake off yeah drive there no issues i can reverse yeah we're all right there into park so got selecting gears so at least we can go out and go and drive her in a minute cup holder broken nope no cup holder broken stereo we're tuned in 105.3 oh i don't know that's not a local station around here let's just see if we can tune something in there we go a bit of signal one ah lovely yep so stereo's all working aircon i'm going to guess the aircon is going to work you know because a volvo driver they do look after the cars we'll also put the heating seats on as well see if they're working we'll come back to that in a sec uh, info screen on there now let's see what we've got else going on we've got tailgate open is it open i'll have to look at that in a minute might be a dodgy switch 195 miles left in the tank as well that's good news bit of diesel for me but other than that really on the dashboard we've got no warning lights other than that sort of service message for the anti-slip so we need to look at that potentially heat seats are working i can confirm that i'm starting to get nice and toasty let's turn them off a minute aircon yes working oh it's beautiful lovely and cold that's nice aircon working that's a nice touch just say it's lovely in here let's try the windows they're all good what about the back ones we've got a full house yes spot on turn that off right i'm pleased with that so far um quick look at the paperwork we've got a little bit i haven't got much of this if i'm honest with you which is a shame but we have got a bit of service history now keeper wise he's got three former keepers we've got a service there done for when was this done now the first of the uh, november last year so that's had done a service on it oh that's good so we haven't got to worry too much there so we've had oil and filter done uh, cabin air oil filter so it's had a full service there and a fuel filter as well 379 quid for a service that's good news so we haven't really even got a service it what mileage was that done at Hundred eighteen thousand. so again there's nothing we need to do to it on that guard we don't even need to service it that's always a bonus is that an mot there yeah labor for mot done uh, carry out an mot 123 quid for an mot that's not right oh there we go carry out brake inspection clean and adjust rear parking brake so he's had the park brake adjusted and sorted out an mot test as well so unfortunately we haven't got, really got a lot there to go on you know we're not mountains of service history but we have got some recent work so he's had a recent service he's had the handbrake sorted he's got an mot until well near enough halloween this year so 20, october 2024 Yes, it'd be great if it had a nice service pack full of history, but the reality is, it's a part exchange. You don't always get loads of history on cars of this age coming in. Most people just assume that they're just going to get binned off and might even be scrapped to this sort of age. So you just don't seem to be very eager to get all the service packs in as you would do on a newer car, where it's really vital that you're getting the service history in, because otherwise the dealer will kick you in the... Quick look under the bonnet. Oh, there it is. Look at that. 2.4, 2.4... 0.01 cc volvo common rail diesel engine superb engine absolutely superb proper proper workhorse this engine in all right it was updated a bit later on but it was still going even into the later models and sort of the xc60s and stuff like that uh, and the v60s and all that it's a fantastic unit really torquey reliable lots of power in it it's a proper decent old school engine it's quite clean under here, nothing really any major to look at. We've got a little bit of residue here and there, but nothing really that's sort of screaming out to me, the major oil leaks or anything like that. Under the bonnet, just looks like a very clean engine for a 20 year old car. So I'm quite pleased with that. We've got recent coolant, we've got fresh coolant in there as well. Like I said, it's been recently serviced. I don't think there's too much to worry there. Oil looks really clean as well. Usually diesel oil is black as out, but that's uh, not bad that, nice and halfway as well. Yeah, it's been well looked after this. You can just tell that it's been a, a cared for car. Let's have a look in the boot because we've got a selection of goodies in there. Now, I know there's quite a few bits in here. Some of them need fitting and some don't. We'll have a quick look. Oh, look at that. Why did I assume that I had no service history? I just thought I had that pack with it. No, I'm wrong. I forgot this was in the boot. So we've got the service pack manual there. Is there a service book in there? Volvo service handbook. Yes, look at that there, stamps are low. Oh my word, timing belt. 114,000 miles at a timing belt. This is a game changer, absolute game changer. So this has gone from a Volvo that had a little bit of recent service history. I thought we'd lost it. Me not listening to the guy probably, obviously. And it turns out it's got a shed load of history. Look at that as well, pack there. 
full of stuff, full of history. Well, we're going to have to go through that. Right, that's cheered me up no end. That's put the price up. Um, in the back there, we've got the roof bars there with the key and that. I've got that in the office for the key, so we've got roof bars for it. It's got some odd things that, in there as well, which I'm not quite sure why they're here. So he's got a couple of wiper motors that have been brought with it, but there's nothing wrong with the wipers, so maybe they're just spares. We've got the clockwork here for the, um, this is like this part of the squib, it goes behind the back of the steering wheel. Now, he reckons that that is what's causing the issue with the um, anti-skid light, so we'll see about that. I, I mean, I understand what he's getting at, so we'll have to have a look at that, because it works in tandem with sort of the, um, the SRS system. So we'll have a look at that and see if that is the issue. We can just put the scanner on that and see if that needs fitting. If it does, that might be the one to fix it. So we've got some drop links there as well. I like front drop links. They're rear drop links. Uh, what else have we got in here? We've got a, looks like a service kit for the transmission there. He did mention something about the, an issue with the four-wheel drive system could do with a service on it. So we need to have a look at that and go and drive it. So that could need uh, sorting out. So we'll have a look at that. That is just a document pack. We've got here a, are they, little, are they the little wiper blades for the, I wonder if they have a little wiper blades for the, oh, look at that. Oh, there we go. No need to go on eBay. They're in the car, look, little wipers. Beautiful. Right, it gets better and better, this. And then in here, I think he mentioned it's a suspension arm. Usually on these, if I remember rightly, is it that type that, uh, yeah, there you go, aluminium arm. So on Volvos of this era, this is quite a common sight, these, uh, these arms. What usually goes on them is lug wishbone bush here. So these are always common for failing. Um, and these arms are really expensive because obviously this is pure aluminium. Um, so change these bushes, what we used to do in the early days was, uh, especially when because these arms were so expensive, you could buy these bushes for very little money. These were like a tenner each. But trying to get these off and press these in, particularly this one here, trying to press that in with uh, sort of the tools you need. Oh my word, it was a nightmare. In the end, we just ended up telling people just to buy these arms, just to suck it up and pay the money, because it's just a pain to change those bushes, particularly that one. Remember those days. Anyway, um, so yeah, an arm needed. So we'll go over drive, see if it needs that fitting. Yeah, I assume if it's there, it probably needs to be fitted to it. So we'll find that out when we go have a drive in a minute. Okay, so I'm starting to get a bit excited about this Volvo. I need to get out and go and test drive it. So we're going to go rig it up now, go for a drive, because if it just drives like a dog and it's not running right or the gear's wrong or something like that, not going through the gears nice, then it's basically game over because I ain't going to start getting involved with say, transmission issues. So it's got to drive right. So let's go and drive it first. And if it does hopefully drive okay, we can weigh up what we're going to do with it because I am at a little bit of a crossroads with it. But we'll explain more about that when we've gone on a proper test drive. Right, okay, we're in the Volvo, fired up, into life, let's get her in drive and get her on the road. So pulling off now, flying into life, no problems there, going through the gears nice, that roar of that 2.4 diesel engine, it's got loads of presence, really talky, talky engine. We're about 160 brake, these early ones, later editions, I think they went to about 180, uh, but they said they've just got bundles of torque, real ideal car for sort of towing. You should see lads bringing, using these for sort of pulling trailers or A-frames and dollies and stuff. They're such a proper workhorse. The gearbox is running really nice and smooth, it's changing up nicely. The engine's not missing a beat. Other than that sort of anti-skid we've got on there, we've got no other warning lights on the dash. Going over a few little potholes and bumps in the road, to be honest with you, I can't really notice anything. We've got an arm in the boot there, so I'm suspecting there's probably been an advisory or an issue maybe with one of the suspension arm bushes in the past or a ball joint. But we can have a look at that if we go any further with it, maybe look to put that on. But to be honest with you, I can't really hear anything. It's driving in a nice straight line, the tracking's probably just about there, maybe slightly arriving and being really picky, but I am being really picky. It's driving really, really well. Coming up to a set of lights now, let's just try these brakes, see how they are doing. Fine, no problems there. Braking in a straight line, no squeaks or anything like that. It's just absolutely running superb. Sitting in this car now, it's just so nice. You just sit back and relax. Automatic gearbox, which is the best thing to have in this car. I mean, they did do manual versions of them, but why would you want a manual in this? It's just one of these cars you want to sit back, relax, just kick back and let the torque just whistle you away. It's just such a nice place to be. This is a sort of car where you're going a long journey, you want to be in this. You don't want to be in a little small hatchback with a manual box up the motorway in long journeys. You want a big lumpy thing like this, just to sit back and just cruise away in. 
fuel wise are not even that bad these either now obviously the autos are not gonna be as good as the manuals are gonna be manuals can get high 30s some even claim 40s on a run whereas these auto boxes are more likely to get you sort of in the low 30s maybe a bit less round town but you expect that really i mean you don't buy one of these for fuel economy this is driving so well in fact i'd even say it's probably driving a bit better than i thought it was i thought we might have a couple of issues now there are issues with this car don't get me wrong but nothing really that's sort of worrying me too much we've got the anti-skid to deal with now that's supposedly to do with the clock spring behind the, uh, the the airbag system here i get where he's at it's part of the srs system it's all interlinked it might be to do with that we need to scan that and have a look it might be something completely different anti-skid is to do with traction control could be a, a more something more serious maybe might be something straightforward like that clock spring might be an issue with an abs sensor it just wants further investigation to be honest with you anything that needs doing to this car is in the boot we've got everything there the only other thing really is we've got a little bit of a rattle going on here at this back which sounds like a, one of these wind strips rattling around which is a bit in there it wants a valet and we want to tackle in really with that uh, the top of that door now i've seen where we go with that with the paint man because i don't want to end up painting a door i ain't going to be painting a door that's not going to be happening but if we can get away with maybe repairing the top of that door, paint it, blend it, yes, it might stand out a little bit, but it's certainly better than having a big top of a rusty door. I don't know. It just all depends if we're going to go on with this. And that is the key issue. Do I go on with this car? Now, there's a lot of dealers out there who just go on with it. Well, yeah, we'll get it fixed, do it. But I just won't just sell any old vehicle. There's a lot of stuff that I just will not deal in, really. I don't want to be dealing in, and particularly sort of stuff like this big lumpy stuff i don't want to really be retailing it i don't mind buying it but usually when i get stuff like this or older bms or big audi diesels or old range rovers and stuff like that or old land rovers and jags in general i usually just sort of trade them on sell them off in the trade to someone else let them sell them let them have a profit and just may maybe just get my money back or make a quick drink on them the simple reason being that over the years i've just decided that trying to sell this stuff can just be a bit of a headache not saying that all of them are bad because they're not i mean this one's an example of something that's probably actually all right and I could really and I'm really tempted to retail it but on a whole you just get less hassle selling the more sort of vanilla average sort of cars so sort of the C1s of course your Fiestas your Astras your Focuses all that sort of mainstream stuff it's so easy to fix those type of vehicles you get less hassle with them and it's just what we prefer to do this is why I keep away from this stuff usually from retailing them so there's two options available to us we could either just say let's trade it on as it is we could put it in an auction we could trade it on we could do either of those two things trade it on i actually think i could probably squeeze a little bit of money out of it maybe 100 150 quid profit and just get it moved on i think someone else will look at this in the same way that i'm doing and think do you know what there is a coin in that cut ties of it get rid of it sold the scene in an auction or in the trade no responsibility to us we haven't got to worry about it under warranty or flip side of it you retail it now if we retail it we can get some good margin out of it i've had a quick look on auto trader these are sort of fetching between 1700 to two and a half grand sort of these examples this has done what nearly 120,000 miles but it has got good history now to get it into a retail state we definitely have to do something with the top of that door get these parts and the boot bolted on and then get it all cleaned up i think potentially we could be looking at two two and a half grand for it but then we've got to put a warranty on it and sell it and we're going to be bound by a warranty and obviously we've got a sort of obligation to the customer for a period of time but risk and reward that's what it's all about and if there was anything wrong with this car sort of with the transmission or the engine wasn't quite running right i wouldn't even be attempting to go down that route i just said you know what let's just get out of it now and see if we can come out either with a little bit of profit out of it or what would you say come out with your trousers on in the trade basically you get your money back so that big question what are we going to do with this volvo it's a tough one really because this is not the sort of thing i would usually retail however if you are going to retail one i think this is probably a good starting point so i may regret this but i am going to retail it i'm going to get it in the workshop get it underneath check it first make sure there's nothing hidden under there no nasty surprises make sure we haven't got any horrible corrosion at pair or anything like that assuming that's all right then we will go down the route of obviously looking to do a razor job card on it get those parts fitted get it through the workshop get it cleaned up try and do something with that door maybe try and paint it if it's going to be too much of a headache then just accept the fact it is what it is and then just price it accordingly if we can get that door painted it will have a bit of an effect on the price actually to be honest with you i don't think you could gas for two and a half grand with that door in that state 
but I think if we can fix that, I think we probably could. So that's what we're going to do with this Volvo. We're going to get it in the workshop, I think, and progress to look to retail it. I hope I'm not making a wrong decision because this is not a car that I would go to an auction and usually look even look at buying. So here's hoping we can turn this car around, get it looking half decent again, try and get some money out of it, and hopefully at the end of it have a nice car that someone can appreciate and get a few more years out of as well because this has got plenty of life left in it. So let me know your thoughts and comments on this Volvo XC70. Do you rate them? Have you owned one? Let me know your opinions on the big Volvo. Also, what would you do with it? Would you be looking to retail it like I'm gonna do? Or would you just look to get rid of it as it is? I'd like to know your thoughts on that. If you wanna keep an update on this car, well, make sure you check out my update videos on the car pitch. I'll keep you abreast of the situation, what's going on with this car as it goes through the workshop and hopefully as we look to progress and sell it. So thank you for watching this video guys, don't forget to check out Bay 52 our today's sponsor, by clicking the link in the description. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you all in the next one.